welcome everyone. So I'm here to explain a little bit about the technology and the CMOS design behind the NeuroPixels probes. Uh, first, I would like to start with a, a little bit of introduction uh, of what is uh, IMEC. So we are a research institute located in Belgium. And the main, uh, let's say, research lines that we manage are all around semiconductors and specifically nanoelectronics and digital technology. There are more sites around the world uh, for IMEC, but Belgium is the headquarters where we do, where we, we have um, most of the research teams uh, working in these uh, nanotechnologies. Um, yeah, we are a very international um, organization and we also have collaboration with many industrial partners all around the world. And uh, one of the purposes also of IMEC is to create a lot of spin-offs um, and startups to enrich the ecosystem mostly within Belgium, but uh, other times as well outside Belgium. Um, so I will start then talking about uh, NeuroPixels. So after the nice introduction from Matteo, I would like to go a little bit more in detail of what is inside the NeuroPixels probes. And uh, one of the motivations a part of solving this interconnection um, challenge that Matteo uh, referred to before is also to miniaturize the whole electronics that is needed to do electrophysiology. So as you see in this slide, you can see that over the years, the, the equipment that is required to do a recording of electrical activity uh, from the brain is shrinking and getting more functionality, getting a uh, more user-friendly and also cheaper. So this is what motivates as well uh, the creation of NeuroPixels to go a step beyond what is here and also to increase the number of channels uh, that we can have in a single device. So specifically for NeuroPixels, um, so this is how a probe look like. Um, you will have an implantable needle that is fully covered with electrodes. So each electrode is a, a sensor that is able to capture a, neural signals from the neurons that are around those electrodes. And uh, these signals uh, will be digitized and amplified in the base of the probe. The idea is that all the signals that come out of the probe are in digital format so that they are less sensitive to interferences and noise uh, from the rest of the electronic system. Specifically for NeuroPixels 1, we had 600 and, uh, 960 electrodes uh, in one implantable shank, while the base had 384 uh, low noise uh, recording channels. So what happened in this probe is uh, we will capture a neural signal, one electrode. This is going to travel through the shank and arrive to a first amplification stage. After this, in NeuroPixels 1, we are uh, splitting the band into AP and LFP uh, signal components, so low frequency and high frequency components. And after that, it's going to an analog to digital converter that is going to digitize these signals. And all this is done in parallel then for 384 channels. Um, to go a little bit in detail what is in the probe, but I'm not expecting that you will understand all this diagram if you don't have a background in electronics. Uh, but it basically shows what I just tell you. There are uh, some amplification stages in what we call the base. Uh, there are filters, there are programmable gains, and all this is multiplex and digitized by an um, analog to digital converter. And all these probes, uh, the complexity here is that it requires a lot of control signals uh, and all these uh, amplifiers need to be carefully placed so that you avoid crosstalk uh, or signal deterioration uh, because of, uh, for example, noise or uh, other things that can go on um, with the uh, internal electronics. So one of the goals uh, here is, of course, to achieve very good performance, and that performance is related to the noise. Uh, so we need to achieve very low noise uh, in the amplifier, low crosstalk, 
and making sure that the signals are uh, sampled at the right speed so that you can see a very good um, or high quality signals after they arrive to uh, the computer. Um, as explained before, in NeuroPixels 1, we are doing something that we call dual band recording. So we are separating the action potentials and the local field potentials. The idea here is that uh, you can amplify those two types of signals with different gains. And this is because the action potential signals are much smaller than the local field potentials. So if you would amplify with the same gain, uh, you will need a high resolution in your ADC to be able to capture both signals at the same time. So for this probe specifically, we opted for having these two separate channels. Um, basically means that you have a double number of channels because you have on the one side AP and the other side LFP, and they are all completely independent in terms of gain. But uh, when we move to NeuroPixels 2, uh, we needed to look for alternatives or strategies to miniaturize the probe. So what we did is, okay, if we want to separate the signals, this is a good strategy to have a low resolution ATC, but at the same time, we needed to replicate many blocks such as the programmable gain amplifiers. Uh, we needed more filters. We needed uh, also uh, more uh, buffers or uh, drivers for the ATC. So what we decided to do is to simplify the channel uh, and have a single gain, a single low pass filter, a single buffer, uh, so that we require less area. So the goal here was just area miniaturization. Um, another uh, thing that uh, is very special in Europixels probes is that we have many more electrodes than channels that we can record simultaneously. Uh, so what it was important is to try to uh, create a way to select those electrodes uh, in a rather flexible way uh, so that uh, you can choose which electrodes are the best to be recorded in a single experiment. And uh, for this, then we enable a certain selectivity options. For example, you are able to select groups of 384 electrodes that are all consecutive, or you can spread those electrodes in different regions along the shank. Um, there are, of course, some uh, options that you cannot select, but the idea is to be as flexible as possible within the limitations of the wiring. Uh, so that's, uh, that was the goal also for NeuroPixels 1, and this also applies to NeuroPixels 2. Um, there were also for NeuroPixels 1 at the very beginning different options for reference selection. The idea is that uh, depending on the experiment, user could choose between a typical external electrode that you can connect uh, through one of the pins of the probe. This is given actually uh, at the system side as a little bit transparent to you. Uh, but there were also some uh, internal electrode options starting for a tip electrode that is a larger electrode located uh, at the tip. Uh, for NeuroPixels 2 that has multiple shanks, we have one tip electrode in each uh, shank. And we also uh, experimented a bit with the option of having a small um, electrodes also as reference, so electrodes that you could either use for recording or either use as internal references. Um, but these el small electrodes, as after testing from the users, we see that they don't behave as well as large electrodes. The, the reason for this is that the small electrodes have very large impedance and they are not able to, um, let's say, drive all the channels in the base if you select that small electrode to be the reference for the 384 channels. So uh, when you choose this option, you are losing a bit of the signal quality, especially at the very low frequencies. 
Um, so here I would like to explain a bit. This is a very recurrent question uh, when um, we give these talks is the difference between reference and ground and uh, which options are uh, more optimal depending on, on the experiment you want to do. So I wanted to explain here a little bit uh, the difference between these two concepts. Uh, so the concept of ground, grounding or defining the ground of your uh, circuit is basically establishing what is your reference point for the voltages that you are uh, measuring. So a ground is basically saying what is your zero volt reference for your recording. So in this case, when you put your ground to zero and you know that your input range is, uh, let's say, 10 millivolts, then you know that the signal that you can record is around this ground, uh, plus minus five millivolts. Uh, beyond those limits, uh, your amplifier is going to saturate. So it's, this is basically putting what is your middle point that establishes uh, your, uh, yeah, your voltage level. So when you have a, a floating system means that you don't have a, a, a ground uh, well established, what you're going to have is that you don't know where this reference point is. So if this reference point is not well defined, you can, may have your recordings completely outside of your input range. And this means that your amplifier will be fully saturated and you won't be able to see the signals that you want to record. While with a grounded animal, you make sure that your signal will be within your range. So that's why grounding the animal to the same ground as your electronics is important just to establish this is my level. The reference is something different. So uh, what is going to happen with the reference is that it's going to go to the negative input of your amplifier. So uh, when you define a reference, it's basically uh, the signal with respect to which your amplifier is going to subtract uh, um, the input. So the reference is important more as a, um, as a means of removal of your common mode noise. Uh, so an amplifier, what it's going to do is a subtraction between your positive input, your energy, negative input and will be an amplified version of this difference. So uh, one of the things when you have what we call a single-ended amplification is the practice when you connect your reference electrode to your ground. This is a common practice. Uh, I will explain later why, but what is going to happen there is that you won't be able to cancel common mode noise and at the output, you will have all the noise that you will record with your uh, single electrode. So the noise gets amplified together with the signal as well. So I will explain here then three different um, reference schemes. Uh, the first one is uh, to have your external reference. As explained before, uh, this is a differential operation where the external reference is connected as well. For example, through a screw or other means, there are many techniques to connect your external reference. Uh, the problem is here is if you want to have this differential operation, means that your ground is separate from the reference, you will need two external electrodes. And this for certain experimental setups, uh, can be an issue, but you will have good cancellation of your common noise. Uh, another, uh, this is uh, probably the most common uh, technique that I know where people are shorting uh, in the probe flex itself, the reference and ground. In this case, they will get a single ended operation. In this case, you only have one single external wire, but you will not have good cancellation of common mode noise. And the third one uh, is uh, maybe an optimal solution where you use the internal reference electrode that is already in the probe. So you have both, you don't have the external wire and at the same time, you can have a good cancellation of movement, movement artifacts and also common mode cancellation. Uh, the only problem with this technique is if 
this is the electrode is at the tip. The recording from the electrodes that are very close to the tip, uh, you can have cancellation as well of the local field potential. So depending on uh, the type of experiment that you are doing, if you are mostly focused on LFPs, then you should take into account that uh, you may have cancellation, especially from the electrodes that are closer uh, to this internal reference at the tip. Okay, uh, maybe just uh, then to finalize, I will go through two things. One is the probe fabrication. So uh, as Mateo mentioned, all this fabrication happens here in IMEC uh, facilities. Uh, we do a part of uh, the CMOS technology. This is just a commercial CMOS technology that we use to do all the electronics. But after the CMOS process, um, we need some post-processing fabrication steps to make the probes. And these probes are um, fabricated using different steps uh, that include the, uh, the probe shaping through deep silicon edge. We have uh, the electrode deposition that also happens with a specific uh, material that is titanium nitrite. This is a very low noise, a uh, very low impedance and noise uh, material. Uh, and it's also uh, very uniform. So it's a very excellent material for recording. And uh, also the thinning of the probe from the backside in order to make it very thin, especially for the shank. Um, all this then um, is done in our facilities. Here you see two pictures of NeuroPixels 1 and 2. As I mentioned before, the goal of NeuroPixels 2 was to basically achieve exactly the same functionality, but in one third or one fourth of the area. So here uh, you see the difference in area. Uh, then the difference, as I mentioned before, is that for NeuroPixels 2, the a recording is a full band single gain uh, for channel simplification. Here you have some pictures. These pictures are from NeuroPixels 1, where you see uh, the main uh, feature of our probes is uh, fabricated using a um, technology called SOI, uh, which allows to have a very thin implantable shank while having at the same time a very thick base. And this is uh, good because we can manipulate and package the probe without risk of damaging the, the base part while the shank is still very thin and easy to implant uh, without causing uh, tissue damage. And um, the probes, of course, require a full system. So IMEC is not only fabricating the probes, but also taking care uh, of packaging them in a very uh, flexible and uh, say user-friendly uh, PCB. This goes to a header stage that you see here, also miniaturized and made with a very low weight. And from there, you have a very long cable that is uh, flexible enough to allow then um, the experiments uh, in different settings. This cable is going to go to a system. The system, we have actually two versions. Uh, now one is the PXI that you see here, and the other that is still pending to be released will be uh, what we call one box, will be a, a smaller box with a only possibility to record from two probes uh, at the same time. But it's uh, much smaller and easy to put in certain uh, setups. So I live here, there are, as mentioned, several publications also for the probe electronics and for the system itself. So for the people interested to know more details about the probes, there are also publications available about uh, all the electronic part. Okay, I think this is everything from me. Thank you so much.